what we're speaking about here and what we'd like to touch on briefly is the election, the current presidential election and the run-up that we're witnessing here in 2011 to the presidential election 2012 to the 2012 election. Um, the Republicans, the Democrats, y'all should be basically familiar with some of the background on this, but we would like to profile a little bit that has gone under the radar, but is very relevant to this particular this particular election is let's make a slave and Willie Lynch the the spell of Willie Lynch the or the Willie Lynch uh, syndrome and what is lining up right now now whether this will completely go through uh, whether what we're putting out here if it gets popular or if other people start to look into it and start to examine what we're saying here and see the reality of it perhaps the system lords might change um, some of the equation to this particular situation but this is likely to be the logical trajectory for the presidential election the whole Cain versus Abel or some say Cain versus unable because of the present economic um, downturn in the economy and uh, Obama's um, projects to reboost the economy ones on the Republican side um, are using the bad economy as part of their campaign to rally their base because the economy has not improved and they're saying well look at Obama Obama doesn't know how to make jobs so forth and so on and Obama is not a uh, economic financial president so forth and so on so now you have you have Cain or Herman Cain and I'm sure many of y'all are familiar with Herman Cain he is the 999 man in other words he's talking about 999 now um, Michelle Bachman she says something very interesting she says that if you um, turn that upside down the devil's in the details in other words the whole 999 thing couldn't can be looked at as 666 at the same time um, then you had another I think the other Mormon candidate um, who said something on the interview he basically said that um, concerning uh, Herman uh, Cain's uh, 999 that he thought it was the price of a pizza because of, as you might know um, Herman Cain he's a businessman and uh, Domino's Pizza and he's run certain companies he's made pizza in fact he uses that and he has a quite lively sense of humor but now the way he is styling himself is very very interesting in the background of all of this and he needs to be looked at if you want to see a more fuller picture is um oh, who's the preacher on the YouTubes uh Atla Atla um you need to look at um Atla I forget his uh name right now actually um but uh he's out there on the YouTubes and he's uh the long legged Mac Mac Daddy as far as he's the one who's popularized and really was out there against Obama during the run up to the Obama um um the, the, was it they, uh, what was his name? Um just had his name just now. Um um Uh, Manning, Manning is his name, James David Manning or something to that effect, uh, Manning, and he has the, um, a Christian ministry up here, a uh, church up here in uh, New York City in Harlem called Atla, Atla, so you can, Atla Ministries, and you can go on the internet and you can see more of his videos, some, some very interesting videos, it keeps it kind of exciting. Because he approaches it from a whole different perspective and there's some relevance to what even Atla has been saying but now if there is an ideal candidate that can put into mainstream politics what Atla has been trying to say for the last three or so 
maybe even four years in the run up to the, the 2008 election, it is Herman uh, Herman uh, Cain because Cain says he's he prefers to be called a black American instead of an African American. Although he acknowledges that you know though the, his ancestors and others came from Africa, but he says like a lot of Negroes say that their roots and their heritage is in America in other words so they are more they would like to see themselves be called more black Americans so you have this under the radar a little bit um, the black American versus the African American kind of agenda some say even there's others that say I prefer to be called American don't label me with my color so forth and so on now all this all of this has has a logical template or a background now what I have in front of me right here some of you might be familiar with it's called let's make a slave let's make a slave or the woolly lynch papers and what is what is important yet often um, suppressed is the relevancy of the Willie Lynch papers. The Willie Lynch papers is so relevant as a template and even as a scientific, from a scientific perspective. If you look at sociology, if you look at the psychology and all those ologies, and if you look at Let's Make a Slave, the Willie Lynch papers, you'll see that it says creation of a multiplicity of phenomenon of illusions. Now we have a so-called black the potential to set up a black American a so-called real American Negro versus a kind of an international um, mulatto so to speak this is how the this is how many people see Obama and see the current situation so McCain's rise now McCain is at this current time um, not McCain I keep saying McCain but that's also a part of the whole Cain and Abel biblical background to it but Herman Cain's rise now he's the front leader he's said to be the front leader for the Republicans as of October 2011 he's the front leader so here let's look at this and let's just make this first point our first point that we like to make and we have to thank our sister wife actually for reminding us of this because as we saw um, Herman Cain um, rise in his um, political, you know, rise in his popularity and in his political prospects for being the first so-called uh, uh, real, <laughs> real, real American Negro or black American candidate. She said something to me, which is very interesting, the wisdom wisdom of our sister wife was very interesting because she reminded me of what Willie Lynch basically says and Willie Lynch says um, you know don't forget to don't forget you must pitch the old black versus the young black male and the young black male against the old black male so we have the potential right now leading up to the election of 2012 the presidential election for 2012 to have a perfect example of Willie Lynchism of the spell of Willie Lynchism the, the Willie Lynch spell is the spell that has the American Negroes and, and black people in America in a frozen psychological state because many of them refuse to even give any credibility or credence to it they like to forget about that just like Herman Cain acknowledge on the Meet the Press um, political show this Sunday he basically said that um, he prefers to be called a black American than an African American and he went through a brief um, explanation that well yes although we although he acknowledges that, that we were brought from Africa but our heritage and our roots are here in America that that does not even make any sense. That really does not. The only way that makes any sense is let's make a slave. If you understand or overstand, let's make a slave. Then what Herman Cain said makes perfect sense. He acknowledges that 
we come from Africa or we were brought from Africa. Notice how these Negroes would talk. We were brought from Africa. You know, like somebody escorted us. We were chauffeured and driven in the USS Jesus and other slave ships from Africa over here to America. But instead of calling himself an African American, he prefers to call himself a black American. And that's very significant. And he says, well, our roots as a people are and our heritage is in America. This is the aftermath. This represents the aftermath of Wooly Lynchism. This represents the aftermath of how or let's make a slave. The spell of Wooly Lynch. So what we have on the horizon now, potentially, like we said, this is not a, a prophecy. I don't want people to say, oh, we are prophesizing this. No, this is not even a prediction. This is just fact. This is just facts. We're just dealing with the facts of the matter as they pertain to what we are witnessing right now. What we're witnessing right now, these are the facts. And this is the reality. Now, it will be very interesting. And this is one of the reasons why we're putting this forward. Very interesting if... This takes the present trajectory, if the present trajectory, which we're outlining right here, based on the Willie Lynch, let's make a slave papers, actually comes to pass. And it seems like the perfect solution, because if you look at the Republican side of it, they were basically bumbling and stumbling for a while. Yes, they were very angry. Yes, they said we have to anybody but Obama, anybody. Remember, they've said this. Now they have this black American or this American Negro, real American Negro, named Herman Cain to set him up against this so-called African American or this African Remember how they keep saying that he's not really American. Uh, he wasn't born here. He wasn't born here. He was there. See, white supremacy or racism is still playing its same old game. And if you ignore, as I said, if you ignore the past, you are doomed to repeat it in the future. And if the, if you ignore the past, or the pain of the past, and, and and the history of the past, and there's negativity to that, that means there's going to be negativity in the future. And it's going to be compounded, just like a debt. It's going to be compounded by interest, by that interest of the ignorance. So, in the Wooly Lynch papers, in the Let's Make a Slave that we have in front of us, and the political situation that appears to be aligning itself, the potential for the political situation, this is the old Wooly Lynch syndrome. This is the old Let's Make a Slave syndrome. And they have a perfect pitching of the old black male versus the young black male, the old nigger versus the young nigger, and the young black male against the old black male. And then it goes on to say that you must use the dark-skinned slaves versus the light-skinned slaves. Remember, the Republicans set this up. They said that anybody but Obama, anybody, anybody, they, 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 are, so, they, they are so possessed with a deep-seated hatred of Obama, not just his policies, because they've been talking this before he even did anything, and even after when he does something that is that is positive from a presidential perspective, they are hard pressed to give him credit, maybe they'll give him credit, like when the whole killing of um, Osama bin Laden and other things that have gone on, they'll give him credit for a brief moment and then they go back and they, they go back and they even get worse when they return to their vomit so it says you must use the female versus the male. This is all Willie Lynch, so we can't even see expansion from Willie Lynch. So it begins, in other words, right? It begins with black people. It began with the so-called black man or the lost sheep of the Beta Israel, the true Hebrews. It began with the black man being enslaved, fulfilling that biblical prophecy in America. But it doesn't end there. It, it, it encompasses the entire world and this entire world system. So the next line in Let's Make a Slave at this point says you must use the female versus the male and the male versus the female. So we just seen a program on um, PBS the other day and it 
its title was that men are finished. That was the proposition. Are men finished? Men are finished because women are excelling in so many different fields over men and, and women are better at this and better at that, so forth and so on. So now there's the popular um, idea that has been disseminated in the so-called public square of the war of the sexes so we have the war of the sexes in this particular document that was written within the within the 400 year period or is based on the primary ideas that were formulated to enslave the lost sheep of the beta israel or so-called black people in the americas and the caribbean the western hemisphere it says you must also have your white servants and overseers distrust all blacks and this is one thing that perhaps Herman Cain doesn't really recognize just yet you understand they probably will give him a blight if he continues to show promise remember they said anybody but Obama so if if Cain continues to show promise they will support Cain versus Abel you understand we have a Cain versus Abel now all this is is this mythology people say oh you're talking about mythology in ancient Egypt and the Bible Oh, we want to deal with reality, but it appears that the reality that we're living is based on earlier archetypes. It's based on earlier types and similes, which goes back, whether you want to say to mythology, whether you want to say to the Bible, it goes back to this, this, this particular paradigm. So it says that you must also have your white servants and overseers distrust all blacks. So... They're saying Cain versus unable. In other words, he's not really able because they can't. I mean, remember, most of the Republicans and the rest of them, they boast themselves to be such lovely Christians. You understand? They are Christians. They're about Christianity, about God. You understand? And the Bible and the old time principles and values, so forth and so on. Don't seem like they care too much for the poor. It seems like they are really hypocrites, religiously speaking, but they believe themselves to be this um, holy moly and holy rollers, right? Versus people like Obama and versus the, the Democrats and the other side of the proverbial aisle. But all this is divide and conquer strategy, divide and computer. But uh, as far as McCain, as far as Cain, I keep saying McCain. Because he Mac Cain, Mac means son. So we're not dealing with the son of Cain. Now we're dealing with the father. We're dealing with the real Cain in the sense. So this whole Cain and, and Abel paradigm is also being set up. But it is necessary that your slaves, that the black people, trust and depend on us. And it's very interesting to see this Cain go about, you know, and, and he's a well-spoken candidate you know he's a well-spoken guy you know he's achieved certain things he's a businessman you, you know and and we don't want to take it from him there so he has achieved a certain amount of success but it seems as though he is like one of these people who are indoctrinated he's you have to remember that the negroes in america especially those of his particular class are very very indoctrinated to see how cain comes out against the poor and the working people, especially with the Occupy Wall Street protests and his particular statements that he has made, it's just like that old Stephen Fletcher sort of Negro who, who's seeking to ingratiate himself with his masses. And now he even feels like he is more like Massa and he's more in that position of the, the, the feel, the, the, the house Negro or the, the overseer, the Negro who becomes the overseer over other Negroes. So he boasts himself. He, he is in the image. He is a, a perfect example of what most white so-called Americans would want other black Americans to be like. So he, he's, he's a good paradigm of that. But um, they must love and respect and depend on us. They must love, respect, and trust only us. This is how this part, um, this first page where this is a speech which was delivered by a white slave owner whose name was William Lynch, from which we get Wooly Lynch and the Wooly Lynch syndrome and Wooly Lynchism on, and where we get the word lynching as well. It's very important to understand 
wicked martyred crucifixion of the black messiah which was called lynching as well and he said these words as part of his speech that he delivered on the bank of the james river roughly what well, it says right here 1712 1712 now I also make a note that uh the queen of england queen uh elizabeth elizabeth, elizabeth she came over here recently when uh george bush was in his second term to visit the jamestown um colony um plantation to honor and commemorate the 400th year of the founding of uh, Virginia and the Jamestown, the first one of the first early um, um, colonies that came over here. Now, what, why that's important is because remember the prophecy in in Genesis chapter 15. It concerns for 400 years. 400 years will the true Beit Israel, the lost sheep, the black Hebrews who don't, the black people, the niggas who don't know their true identity, and. Cain, he emphasizes that he is not African. I think this is very much a key. He emphasizes he is not African. He acknowledges yes, we came from Africa. We was brought from Africa, which is a very strange thing. Not saying that we were brought over here as slaves. We was enslaved. We was brutalized. We was dehumanized, so forth and so on. No, he knows if he says something like that, he's out of there. He's out because white America, so called, don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear that. They want Negroes like Cain to come along. You understand? And this is where we get the perfect, um, the perfect example, even here in the 21st century, of the pitching of the old black male versus the young black male, and the young black male versus the old black male, and the dark skin slaves versus the light skin slaves, and the and the Africans in the Americas versus the Africans on the continent you, you, you see how we can go through this paradigm this parable uh, outlining a multiplicity uh, you know of multiplicities that we're dealing with here Willie Lynch says on the, on, on the first part he says I've outlined a number of differences a number of differences so we're gonna see in this campaign if Cain continues to be a front leader as he has been and as he seems to be we're going to see a continual outlining of differences between Cain versus Obama or Cain versus Abel and I make these differences and make them bigger so it's about making these differences first of all making these differences you understand Cain is a real black American and then Obama, we don't even know if he was even born in America. See, they've done that over the past three, three, four or so years. Um, so they've, they're taking these differences and they're making, emphasizing them, making them bigger, making them main points. And they use, you understand, the fear now. Now you're going to see an emphasis on the whole problem, reaction, solution, Hallegian dialectics to utilize fear utilize distrust and utilize and here's the key thing utilize envy for the control purposes for the control purposes so these are methods that have been worked out on the plantation and and when we look at these methods that first were really effectively used against the enslaved Hebrews or the black people the lost sheep the Beta Israel in the Americas, we can also see how these these tactics, methodologies, and techniques have also gone more global. They have also become they also use globally, and the one that uh, profits from these is the corporation. So we once again have the corporation. We have to understand that the plantation slavery and corporate America and the whole economic and 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 Wall Street financial situation are inextricably linked together. They are bound together because Wall Street was the wall where they sold niggas like Cain who were a little bit more like Obama, if you understand. You know, Africa, his father's African. The 
they keep emphasizing he's African. His father's African. That's the only thing. His father's African. The fact that his mother's white is the reason probably why some of the guilty white folks and others gave him a blight initially. And even some of the indoctrinated Negroes, other Negroes in America gave him a blight. But that African part, that his father's African, it rubs a lot of... You see, why does that rub a lot of white Americans, especially Republicans, the wrong way? Because if his father's African, from Africa, and didn't come through this experience in the Americas, that means that some of that indoctrination... You understand? Some of that indoctrination that many of the black slaves in America received is not present. You understand? And therefore, it cannot become so-called self-refueling and self-generating as it is amongst those um, indoctrinated blacks or indoctrinated Negroes or authentic nigger Americans, black Americans like Cain. So, understanding that and, and probing this, it really makes the whole picture very much, uh, uh, very much, um, very much clearer as we look at it. And once again, I got to thank my wisdom. I got to thank my sister wife for, for pointing it out. Although I prob probably, I hope I eventually would have seen it, as some of y'all may have already saw it, and some might even see it without hearing it presented in this particular format they are pitching the old black male versus the young black male and they're pitching the young black male versus the old black male and even at another level if you put them side by side Cain and Obama or Cain and Abel they are also using the dark skinned slave so called or the dark black, the dark nigger, dark negro versus the light skin, so the dark skin, the light skin, so forth and so on. Now, with that being understood, we want to emphasize once again that this is not a prophecy. This is not a prophet. You know what? We keep emphasizing this because there's a lot of false prophets out there. What we're stating here is a fact, and we challenge anyone to dispute this fact or, or dispute what we're setting up here and saying that this is not a coincidence. This is planned. This is not a coincidence. This did not just happen this way. This is part of a, a long range, a long, uh, a conspiracy of, of long duration. You understand? For at least, at least a 400 year conspiracy. And we're seeing now the aftermath of the template that was laid by Willie Lynch and others of his kind. Willie Lynch and his kind. It's Willie Lynch and his kind that have laid this particular template right here. And now you can even see that for the Republicans. Their run up to the 2012 election is becoming uh, more energized. You understand? Because before, for the last maybe six months or more, it, the Republicans really have been lacking luster, you know, with nine or so candidates, and you know, uh, now when a black man now really is able to speak effectively, and make no mistake about it, um, Cain is a very savvy um, and shrewd businessman. You know, saying Cain is a is, is a Cain is I'm, I hate to say it like this, but Cain is an exceptional Negro. You understand? Is an exceptional Negro. You understand? And and this is without any so-called um, um, messianic um, delusions, you know, for what he has achieved. But yet, what even Cain may not recognize is that he is a byproduct of "Let's Make a Slave," as many of us, in one way or another, but many are unconsciously byproducts of let's make a slave and then it becomes very funny sad shocking and even can reach the abominable levels you know, was because a lot of negroes like even when we heard kane today on on the morning show he said um the sunday political morning show he said um i'm a black american not an african-american although we acknowledge that we were brought 
I know I mentioned this a couple of times, but though he acknowledged we were brought from Africa, my roots, my heritage is in America. You understand? So roots, your heritage. What, what kind of statement? Think about that for a moment. That means that either um, um, Cain is like a mind-controlled nigger slave, or he doesn't recognize what the word heritage and roots really mean. But that is uh, that is a matter for for a, a, another another commentary, ain't it? All right, shalom, salam, tana, ain't I